All right, good news. The beam finally lives again. Forgive the mess. I uh, have been working some pretty long hours, so not a lot of time to clean up around here. <laughs> um, for those who have not seen this before, this one is a 240 volt dual motor unit, parallel mounted. So that means we have two motors um, where they're both sucking air out of the main canister. And because we have two motors that are in parallel, we also have a dual exhaust. And uh, fortunately I have a 220 volt or 240 volt outlet in my apartment below the air conditioner. And uh, yeah, it just took me a lot longer to get done with this than I thought, because as I worked on it, it's like, oh, it could use a new one of these. It could use this, it could use this, and uh, it was pretty dirty because this is uh, an inverted filter system. So it has like a permanently mounted filter in here that, you know, when the vacuum pulls on is pulled up into this canister. And then when you shut it off, it comes down and it's supposed to self clean, but that doesn't really work. So I've installed the uh, two hole bag system in here. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of an ugly process because, uh, the Atlas bag system is not meant for these older units. So, uh, it's like I ordered the adapter and I'm sitting there looking at this going, well, how does this attach to it? And I guess the newer models have little notches into the cutouts where it would, uh, kind of twist and lock into there, but this one bolts in. So... <laughs> the guy I bought the parts from told me, you know, well, there's no easy way to do a direct conversion with this. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm doing it the hard way. So <laughs> what I did was I took my heat gun and actually heated this uh, piece up so I could insert a piece of pipe through here. Um, and then I just attached that to the uh, bag adapter because the bag adapter would take the place. It, it would take the place of the normal inlet. So, that does have a fitting on it that's meant to attach to a piece of central vacuum line. And then, uh, let me think. Um, I replaced the foam. There, um, there's actually no foam inside this, uh, motor compartment, which is kind of strange. It was suggested that it might be due to heat issues, but I replaced the foam under the dome here. And then there were, uh circles of foam that were around the motor's cooling fans like not above it but around them yeah the foam had just gotten so brittle it was crumbling so it's like well let's get that fixed and then i changed the front motor bearings and cleaned the motor fans because they were just they were very dirty and while the front bearings weren't like horrible it was still bad enough to the point where i'm like well i'm gonna change those and uh, once I got into the motors, I discovered that, oh no, I don't have that bearing size. So I had to order some new bearings. So yeah, it's, you know, it hasn't been anything super expensive or, you know, super difficult. It's just, you know, I kept running across things that I wanted to do with it. You know, like this, uh, the seal, the gasket between the, uh, the dust, the dirt cup and the moat in the uh, housing here it's like I didn't really notice how worn out the old one was so it's like when I took a look at it it's like okay I guess I need one of those too so yeah um, and this at the time of its production would have been a top-of-the-line model to uh, tangential bypass two-stage motors in here and like I said 240 volt so quite the energy hog and I'm assuming this like any sort of other parallel unit like my uh, JE Adams car wash vac is going to have very high flow to it but you know the suction probably won't be above what uh, a single motor is capable of and if it is not by much so, 
I think I've kind of rambled on long enough, and I'm sure some of you are like, yes, get to it already. So let's take a look at its power. And because this is a little bit uneven right there, I'm going to stick a piece of, uh, I'm going to stick a 90 degree elbow on there to have a flat surface. All right, this is going to get loud. Not the unit itself, but this anemometer is going to scream. You know, I know this thing is only made to have four spots on it. Um, why don't we change the unit on here, maybe? Okay, so we got knots, miles per hour. Why don't we just take uh, meters per second measurement on this? Because, I mean, I clearly exceeded the, uh, the four unit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I don't even know what it does you know if that's ever exceeded because I've never gone over that before so let's try this in meters per second So it kind of like saved that number while I was changing units over. But yeah, that uh, that was incredibly shrill. <laughs> but clear to say we have a new record holder, which isn't surprising because I think the, uh, the, the motors of the JE Adams were only rated at like 94 or 97 CFM, somewhere in that area. And each of these is rated for like you know, I can't remember, but I think the unit itself has a rating of like 211. But now that we've seen what we're getting from the unit, why don't we put the uh, hose on there and see what we get from there. All right, so the inlet's on, the hose is on. Like I've said, don't mind the mess. I have uh, not been home a lot. So I've got this laid out fairly straight, except for this, of course, because I don't have 30 feet of space. <laughs> At least not, a, not in a straight line. So let's take some hose end measurements here and see how we stack up against the Canavac. All right, we won't have to worry about this exceeding the, uh, <laughs> the, four, the four digit limit, not at the end of a hose. So let's switch this on and see what we get. This is exciting. Okay, well, 
clearly it does have more airflow. The suction isn't quite as good as the Canavac, uh, which has the single 8.4 inch motor, where this has two, um, two 5.7 two-stage motors in parallel, which is supposed to give a higher airflow, but, you know, like I said, it's, uh, suction isn't going to be much higher than a single motor. Of course, you know, when you add the hose into it, you know, you're going to have some leakage from any of the swivel joints, like right here, or, you know, the connections over here. Even though this valve here is closed, we're still going to experience a little leakage from it, because it's not really well sealed. But, uh, yeah, there we go. We have a little bit more data. Now I just need to get my hands on a um, unit with in-series motor, so the exhaust of one motor feeding into another motor's inlet, which has the opposite effect as a parallel. The airflow stays about the same, but the suction receives a major boost. I've often wondered which one of them produces better power at the end of the hose, because uh, the longer your air path, the more airflow you're going to lose. But when you have more pressure or more suction, you'll retain more of that airflow. But, you know, I mean, it's clear we've lost a lot going, you know, from the unit to the hose end. We have lost a lot. And I think it's safe to say that the Canavac probably proportionally retains more of it. And it's not all in, you know, that suction difference, because I think that scored somewhere around 140. So, I mean, 20 inches of suction when we're dealing with suction in the 120 to 140 range isn't going to be significant enough to really boost that. But the more fluid you try to move through a space, the more resistance you'll encounter. So units with a really high flow are also going to encounter more resistance, you know, the smaller your inlet gets.